Usually movies are rigid, immutable products once they're released, but time and time again we're seeing changes being made post-release. The most infamous example of course is George Lucas's controversial changes made to the original Star Wars trilogy, however there are more and more movie changes which are tougher to make sense of. From random dialogue changes to strange edits to sound and music, most of these alterations didn't exactly go down well with fans. So with that in mind, I'm Adam, this is What Culture, and here are 10 movies weirdly changed and nobody knows why. Number 10. Will Smith's Change Dialogue, Men in Black Men in Black is a film so firmly set in most of our minds that even the slightest change is pretty noticeable. Case in point, one head-scratching revision of its streaming release was recently brought to light by a keen-eared Redditor. Early in the film, when the soon-to-be Agent J is chasing down an alien, he originally shouts, freeze means stop, but in some streaming versions of the movie, he instead says, it's your ass when I catch you. More to the point, he says this phrase twice in a row, and even weirder, the subtitles still have the original freeze line. It's tough to make sense of why decisions like this are made. One commenter suggested it could have been in response to the 1992 incident where a 16-year-old Japanese exchange student was shot and killed in the US because he didn't understand the word freeze. But given that Men in Black came out in 1997 and its streaming release many, many years later, it's not quite a persuasive explanation. Number 9. Trimming the Ending, The Notebook In February 2019, Netflix subscribers cried foul when the streamer's version of hit romantic drama The Notebook featured a baffling changed ending. While the original tear-jerking climax saw an elderly Noah and Ali die peacefully in each other's arms whilst holding hands, the Netflix version changes this to simply showing the couple holding hands before cutting to shots of birds flying over a lake followed by the credits. Basically, the Netflix release doesn't kill Noah and Ali off, robbing the film of its much-loved heartbreaking finale. Fans were furious and made their feelings clear on social media. Cut material is often a result of streaming services accidentally receiving edited for TV or edited for airlines versions of a movie. Given that the notebook's ending doesn't contain any objectionable content whatsoever, unless the reality of old people dying is somehow offensive to you, it's an absolutely inexplicable change. Number 8. The Remixed Gunshots, The Terminator if you saw James Cameron's The Terminator prior to 2001, the unique gunshot sound effects are likely seared into your brain. The almost cat-like roar of the Terminator's 45 longside is totally unmistakable. But for the 2001 Special Edition DVD release, the original mono sound mix was remixed into 5.1 surround sound, resulting in many of the movie's original sound effects being altered or outright replaced. This included the aforementioned gunshots being changed to sound like pathetic pea shooters, and the cannon-like shotguns similarly having much of their kick dialed down. While one can certainly appreciate the decision to update the original audio for modern home sound systems, it's less understandable that Cameron's distinctive original audio choices were made more clean and sterile because… reasons? Though some many home releases do include an additional mono audio track, allowing fans to watch it as God intended, most recent versions of The Terminator sadly forced the inferior revised sound effects upon viewers. Number 7. The Ultra Green Color Grade, The Matrix the various home releases of The Matrix have been a source of considerable controversy for fans, given that the 2008 Blu-ray release severely cranked up the presence of the colour green throughout the film, especially during the Matrix set scenes. While The Matrix has always had a distinctive green hue to it since its original theatrical release, the 2008 Blu-ray took this too far in the eyes of many fans such that many scenes ended up looking markedly different from their more muted appearance in cinemas and on early DVD. It's been suggested that the colorists who worked on the Green Dub Blu-ray attempted to make the film more aesthetically consistent with its 2003 sequels, both of which featured a more overpowering green tone. And yet, given that the Matrix cinematographer, Bill Pope, oversaw the most recent 4K Blu-ray release and restored its original theatrical color grade, that clearly wasn't the intent of either Pope or the Wachowskis. Number 6. Removing Mustafa Akkad's credit, Halloween 2 
Much like the original Halloween, its 1981 sequel was executive produced by Mustafa Akkad, who served as one of the franchise's earliest financers. The opening titles for Halloween 2 as such include the credit, Mustafa Akkad Presents. But for the 30th anniversary Blu-ray release in 2011, Akkad's credit was removed and replaced with Universal and MCA Company Presents, in a font that didn't match the rest of the credit's distinctive look, nor less. Fans lamented Akkad's erasure from the credits, not merely due to the early role he played in bankrolling the franchise, but also because Akkad died in 2005, and so removing his well-earned credit a few years later seemed in poor taste. Akkad's son called the change disgusting, while fans organised a boycott of the disc, promoting Universal to release an updated version of the Blu-ray a few months later which restored Akkad's name to the credits. In the very least, the distributor allowed fans who'd already bought their copies to receive a free replacement. Quite why Akkad's name was taken off the credits in the first place though is anyone's guess. Hey everyone, Adam here, and while we're between entries here, I just want to ask you, which movie do you think has a really weird change between its theatrical release and like DVD or Blu-ray release when you think, why the hell did that happen? Make sure you let us know down in the comments, I'm looking forward to checking them out, and while you're there, you know the usual, give us a like and a subscribe. Alright, now back to the list. Number 5. So many changes, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. No film on this list has had more comprehensive changes between theatrical and home release than the recent Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. When the film hit digital platforms last summer, fans quickly picked up on literally dozens of minor changes which had been made into the animated superhero masterpiece. These include, but are certainly not limited to, using alternate takes for certain lines of dialogue, adding and removing on-screen text, changing camera movements in some shots, and even changing the colour grading of certain scenes. While individually these changes are minor enough that most viewers likely won't notice, collectively they do add up to make the home release markedly different from the theatrical version. Given the reportedly tight deadlines the film was under to get finished, one can assume that the team simply kept working on it even after a locked version was sent out to cinemas, and that the version that we initially saw on the big screen wasn't really the final one. Yet considering that most of the changes aren't latent improvements upon the original version, it's easy to see why fans are so miffed. Number 4. Replacing the original score, Happy Birthday to Me Cult classic horror film Happy Birthday to Me's distinctive musical score for the film's theatrical release was provided by Bo Harwood and Lance Rubin, but when Sony released it on DVD in 2004, their work was strangely absent. More to the point, Harwood and Rubin's score was replaced with a notably different musical score that wasn't attributed to any single composer in the movie's credits. The new score was reportedly taken from an old work print of the film, which had a temp score attached during the production process. Now, quite why the theatrical music was replaced has never been clarified, because while rights issues sometimes prevent pop music from being included in home releases of movies, it's basically unheard of for any original scores created exclusively for a film to get caught in similar legal red tape. It may simply be that Sony didn't like the original score, but given that original director J. Lee Thompson passed away in 2002, the change was evidently made without his creative input. Thankfully, when Anchor Bay re-released Happy Birthday to Me on DVD in 2009, they restored Harwood and Rubin's original score, and it's remained intact for every subsequent home release. Number 3. No Stairway, Wayne's World one of the most memorable gags in Wayne's World sees Wayne attempting to play Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven in a guitar shop, only to be stopped by an employee, who points to a sign that reads, No Stairway to Heaven. And if you didn't see Wayne's World in cinemas, you ended up seeing a subtly different version of the scene, albeit one which ultimately doesn't work nearly as well. In the theatrical version, Wayne plays the iconic opening four notes from Stairway to Heaven before being stopped, but for all home releases until recently, it was replaced with a generic distorted guitar sound. Now, while we all know that Led Zeppelin reportedly asked for $100,000 for Stairway's four notes to be included in Wayne's World's home video release, hence their exclusion, what makes less sense is why Wayne's altered guitar playing sounds absolutely nothing like Stairway to Heaven. Why wouldn't they simply re-record four new notes that sound similar to Stairway while being different enough to avoid legalities? Instead, we get some generic distortion that sounds nothing like Stairway and therefore ruined the joke for an entire generation of viewers. Thankfully, the recent 4K Blu-ray finally restored the original Stairway notes, presumably at considerable cost. Number 2. Disney's Scared of Butts, Splash 
Despite having a PG rating, hit fantasy comedy Splash received a digital edit which would be hilarious were it not such a sad indictment of Disney's pathetic allergy to bare human flesh. Early in the movie, Daryl Hannah's mermaid character Madison runs into the sea after kissing protagonist Alan, offering audiences a brief view of her behind as she does so. Except for the Disney Plus release, the House of Mouse decided to add additional digital hair to fully cover Hannah's behind. And while you might have assumed that the original version of the scene included a full-cheeked butt flash, that's not the case at all. Even in the original scene, Hannah's modesty is already covered up relatively well by her hair, enough that one could easily assume that the original version was the censored one. And it didn't help matters that the CGI edit was extremely naff looking, as though Hannah was wearing a pair of fur shorts, ensuring it was easily spotted by fans of the comedy classic. Thankfully, Disney relented in 2022 and restored the original shot. And number one, changing the tar man's voice, the return of the living dead. In the original release of 1985's comedy horror classic, The Return of the Living Dead, the iconic tar man zombie speaks with a raspy, high-pitched vocal tenor that sounds almost otherworldly. But when the film's special edition DVD was released in 2002, the decision was made to alter the tar man's voice to sound deeper and less raspy. Whether it was re-recorded or simply pitched down is tough to discern, but either way, it's an odd change, and one made without the input of writer-director Dan O'Bannon. One can assume that the intent was to make the tar man sound more stereotypically menacing, but this rather ignores two things, namely that The Return of the Living Dead is a horror comedy, and that the original raspy voice sounds incredibly eerie in a far less conventional way. Justice eventually prevailed, however, as the original voice was finally restored in all its uncanny glory for the 30th anniversary collector's edition Blu-ray release. Thank the living dead for that.